Our ongoing partnership with Palantir. Leveraging Palantir. Deepening our partnership with Palantir. Partnership with Palantir Technology. We're just seeing a, a company that is, we've never seen before in the history of, of software. In 2024, one of the world's fastest growing tech companies didn't make a new iPhone, didn't build a social network, and doesn't sell your data to advertisers. Yet its market cap hit $400 billion, and its software helps decide who wins on battlefields, who gets vaccines, and who ends up in custody. The company is called Palantir, and if you haven't heard of it, you don't really understand where global technology and 21st century warfare are heading. I don't think in win-lose, I think in domination. This is a company built for bad times. Bad times mean strong finances internally. Bad times are very good for Palantir because we build products that are robust, that are built for danger. Palantir began in 2003 during the War on Terror when the US military desperately needed a system that could predict where the next improvised explosive device would detonate in Iraq. Today, the same firm builds AI algorithms for the Pentagon, systems that guide combat drones, and software that analyzes data on millions of people. Palantir is here to disrupt and make our, the institutions we partner with the very best in the world, and when it's necessary, to scare enemies and on occasion kill them. And that's where the controversy begins. Palantir is not a typical IT company. It's the West's technological arm in next generation warfare. Its clients include the US Department of Defense, the CIA, the FBI, the UK's NHS, and more recently, the armed forces of Ukraine and Israel. A company that in theory connects data in practice helps track terrorists optimize precision strikes, and support surveillance on a scale most people can't imagine. What we do is we use what legal scholars call predicate-based search. So we would look at you, and then we would go out and say, oh, there's lots of different things in your life that may be indicative of someone, being, someone involved in bad behavior. Palantir doesn't hide its mission. Its CEO, Alex Karp, says bluntly, our job is to defend the West. And that means building technologies that win wars. The core mission of our company always was to make the West, especially America, the strongest in the world for the sake of uh, global peace and prosperity. That line is crucial. In a world where big tech firms shy away from working with the Pentagon, Palantir runs toward it and makes that stance its brand. Everyone should know what this company does because its AI solutions at times resemble something out of Orwell. That's why today, I'll show you why this firm is now among the 20 most important American companies and explain what Palantir actually is because many people know almost nothing about it. Let's begin. Palantir was founded in 2003 when the world was consumed by the War on Terror. The US military and intelligence agencies were drowning in data, intercepted communications, battlefield reports, satellite imagery, intelligence briefs, the problem was that no one could connect it all. Soldiers were dying every day because there was no way to predict where the next IED would go off. Enter Palantir, co-founded by Peter Thiel, billionaire, an early investor in Facebook and a proponent of technocratic libertarianism. With his funding and money from the CIA via InQtel, they built a tool that changed the game software capable of integrating vast data sets and surfacing connections a human would miss. In 2004, 2003, 2004, 2005, when we started Palantir, um, the idea of trying to, uh, to do a military-related uh, software startup, there was nobody who even wanted to give you money as a venture capitalist. People thought we were yeah. insane. The wars in Iraq and Afghanistan became Palantir's first proving grounds. Their system processed satellite feeds, radio signals, patrol logs, and even social media posts to predict insurgent movements. The result? In some regions, successful attacks on convoys fell by as much as 40%. The US military fell in love with the tool, and Palantir became an unofficial hero of a conflict the public barely heard about. That was only the beginning. 
From 2010 to 2020, Palantir built its myth as the world's most powerful data analysis tool. The company deepened work with the FBI, CIA and NSA and moved into civilian institutions. In 2018, it emerged that Palantir was helping ICE, the US Immigration Service, track and deport people. Under a $127 million contract, it developed a system for tracing personal data that critics called a tool for violating human rights. Of course, this led to protests. My house has been protested for many months, almost every day. Our office has been protested. Many Palantirians who do not just follow what I say, but are, are, are critical people, uh, protested against it internally. Some people were so upset by it that they left. These are very hard decisions. I respect the people that that decide they can't be involved in this, but we have a position. At the same time, Palantir grew a commercial arm, moving into finance and energy. BP, Airbus, Ferrari, United Airlines, General Mills, these and others used its software to analyze supply chains, logistics, and market risk. By 2022, the commercial segment accounted for over 40% of revenue, but the real inflection point came in 2022 when the war in Ukraine broke out. Palantir delivered systems to the Ukrainian military, from satellite image analysis to artillery coordination. As Alex Karp himself puts it, Ukraine won many battles thanks to our products. This isn't about abstract technology. It's about real decisions, where to fire a missile, how to maneuver troops, how to track Russian tanks. Ukraine could win and it could be dangerous because they're gonna win. That looked batshit crazy. In fact, that is the reality we're in. And we have to, you have to begin with the facts. The facts are they have massively outperformed. By the way, this is gonna change the way war is fought. Because here you have a tiny country with very little assets and they, right. in the use of software and heroism, you can push off and win against a, a At the same time, Palantir won contracts for Project Maven, the Pentagon's program to develop AI for analyzing drone imagery. The company is also building Titan, the first AI-defined combat platform intended to shorten the time from target detection to trigger pull. Put bluntly, Palantir is creating the algorithms of future war. From 2023, Palantir's share price climbed from $6 to a staggering $180 in under two years. This company will set the rules for control systems and, by its own account, lead the West to technological dominance. CEO Alex Karp believes the liberal democratic order of the West is fragile and threatened by authoritarian regimes such as China and Russia. In his view, defense and intelligence technologies are tools to protect the open society from totalitarianism and aggression. He studied philosophy, earned a doctorate in law at Goethe University in Frankfurt, and was influenced by Marxist critics of capitalism like Jürgen Habermas and Theodor Adorno. From that perspective, he argues technology should uphold democratic values rather than erode them, as big tech algorithms often do to privacy. The central question, in my view, of civil liberties is how, it's not if the government has data, because let's assume the government has as much data as a health insurance company, it's how is that data being used? Is it being used in a way that's lawful? Meaning, do they have the right to use it? And is it being migrated into places it's not allowed to be used? He frames the West as a space of individual liberty. Karp often stresses that the United States and its allies are the only bloc that guarantees human rights and personal freedom at scale. The core mission of our company always was to make the West, especially America, the strongest in the world for the sake of uh, global peace and prosperity. America is the best at building software. And uh, the fact that we can build weapons, software-enhanced weapons, that really make our adversaries quiver. If you do not feel comfortable supporting the legitimate efforts of America and its allies in the context of war, don't join Palantir. One of the biggest paradoxes around Alex Karp and Palantir is this. The company says it defends freedom while delivering tools that enable mass data analysis, surveillance, and now AI-driven control. In short, ordinary people are too vulnerable to manipulation and control from outside our block, so the order must be safeguarded for them, neutralizing threats at the source. That's why Palantir advances three pillars, Gotham for intelligence services, the CIA, NSA, and police. 
It's the company's flagship product, built primarily for intelligence and security needs, not a mere database. It's a platform for integrating, analyzing, and visualizing massive data, especially for intelligence, military, and law enforcement operations. Foundry, for business and government, catching errors and boosting the competitiveness of Western firms while eliminating weak links. AIP, Artificial Intelligence Platform, a tool that lets institutions integrate AI in a controlled environment without the risks of wild AI. Introduced in 2023, AIP allows militaries, government agencies, and corporations to deploy AI safely in sensitive operations, mission planning, threat prediction, and the automation of strategic and operational decisions. AIP empowers organizations to use large language models and other cutting-edge AI safely and securely. The platform allows you to do three things. First, AIP lets you deploy large language models and any other AI within your private network anchored in your private data. It helps you create a full fidelity, real-time representation of all of the concepts, actions, and decisions within your business. Every truck, every warehouse, every shipment, every delay that can then be used by AI. I've covered the theory. Now let's move to practice so you can see how your life might look in the future under Palantir's solutions. For example, predictive policing. Palantir tested systems in the US that aim to forecast crime, like in Minority Report. The result? Waves of criticism and lawsuits. In short, the system identified suspects and their potential next moves. Next, the NHS in the United Kingdom, where Palantir won a contract to modernize health system infrastructure and manage patient data, predicting disease progression and guiding treatment. Privacy organizations sounded the alarm. This crosses a line. You've likely heard about Israel's operation with exploding pages in Lebanon to eliminate key Hezbollah figures, an operation directly supported by Palantir's software, which, the company argues, protects Israel's security and helps it prevail in Middle Eastern conflicts. How do the finances look? 2023, revenue above $2 billion. 2024, market value around $250 billion. One year share price increase, plus 340%. For comparison, that's a Tesla-like trajectory in its golden years. In terms of market cap, Palantir is the size of the Czech economy. The company is shrouded in secrecy, and there are documents pointing to ties between key figures and Republican circles, while some employees argue the firm is drifting toward digital surveillance and a vision of the state straight out of Orwell's 1984 one employee explains that many early team members believed Palantir would build technology to protect the marginalized and to develop AI responsibly. Now, he claims, Palantir is breaking those principles. Instead of helping, it supports repressive policies, deportations, and military surveillance. As we kind of increasingly live in a simulated world, we lose touch with reality and the human decisions that matter, and we move closer towards governance by algorithm. Not only made by decisions of automated artificial intelligence systems, which is a problem, but more importantly, subject to decisions made by the people who are influencing these AI systems and creating them in order to fulfill an agenda for whatever their profit-seeking or control-seeking objectives are. We're at the brink of using these technologies potentially to, to run our government, to run our battlefields, and our personal lives. Using artificial intelligence as a sort of panacea solution across our federal departments and especially when they're, again, wielded by uh, people with a very distinct agenda, uh, puts everyone at risk. Palantir doesn't draw attention like Elon Musk's Tesla or Mark Zuckerberg's Meta, but I can guarantee this company and others like it in AI will drastically change our lives. Algorithms are one thing, but artificial intelligence will classify us in ways nothing ever has in human history. Part of this will surely benefit us, perhaps in fields like medicine. Thanks for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe. See you soon. Bye.